Let's see the amps. Yeah. It's not supposed to do that. <laughs> yeah. Hey guys, I'm Ben with Upcountry Electric. We got a trouble call today for a little booster pump that's apparently not working. The customer thinks that uh, there's something wrong with the pressure switch. So we'll see when we get there. Hopefully pretty simple. All right, see you there. All right, so here we are, booster pump, pressure switch. Got a little disconnect over there. Let's just see if the breaker's tripped. Breaker's on. Um, this is a low pressure cutoff switch. Has this little handle on the side here. Uh, let's see if it's open. Well, those contacts look pretty dirty. I might end up changing that out, but let's just see. Uh, check voltage. Let's see. Yeah, I got 240 coming in. going out. Oh, that's not a good sign. That voltage going out, but the motor's not spinning. Sounds like high amps. We need to verify that. Sounds like locked rotor. Let's see the amps. Yeah. We've had this problem here before. The pump gets seized up and um, the motor won't spin. I guess other than just calling it quits and saying you need a new impeller and a rebuild kit, which I've done in the past. The other thing I've done is we can take the cap off the end here and try and spin the shaft. See if we can break it loose. See how bad it is. We'll give that a try. So first steps to isolate power. And then open the end up here. Might as well verify. Might as well verify we got power off. Good. Good. Yeah, let's take the end off of that thing. Capacitor. Capacitor's kind of blown out. <laughs> Looks like it lost all its juice. And popped, honestly. Go ahead. You can see the lid just came clear off. Oh, yep, there's everything. And you can see down in there, it doesn't look too good either. It's not supposed to do that. <laughs> I was gonna test it, but I think we can I think we can say it's beyond its life. So and for fun, let's just see what the microfarads are. Says it should be 161 to 193 microfarads. This guy. too low okay so we got to get a replacement one of these but while we're in here we should uh, we should uh, check that shaft rotates and then when we come back we should put in a new pressure switch because the contacts on this one are pretty bad we can do that on the return trip this isn't going to run until then. So this is the centrifugal switch. 
for the pump right there as it spins this weight flips up and that disengages this contact here on that part or yeah this is normal and that's disengaged so this whole switch has just come off its seat Perfect. So, shaft is not seized. Careful. The switch is working. Capacitor is toast. We need a new 160 to 193 microfarad. We'll just bring that downtown. And next time we're up country, we'll throw it in. Alright guys, we'll see you when we come back to make the repair, or we'll see you on the next one. Hey guys, so we're back. Got our replacement capacitor brand new and uh, we'll throw it in and see if we can get this thing running again and um, I also want to change out the contacts on this pressure switch may even just change out the whole switch we'll see um, they are looking pretty sooty and I have a lo new low pressure cutoff switch so we'll probably do that too and get them up and running all right Make sure these wires aren't near the spinny parts, but otherwise looks good. Take our view capacitor. The yellows on one pole. We have our red and white on the other. Spin them around. Looks better. And I'm gonna make sure. Again, that none of the wires are going to get pinched by the cover or by the, the shaft when it spins this part right here. I think, honestly, I should be able to tighten down on this capacitor strap here. And we should be able to just bump it. Um, with that cover off and be all right. Let's see. Let's see what happens. Yeah. Nice. So this low pressure cutoff switch has a little toggle on the side. I'll explain that more when I change them out, but it sucks in. Spins good. Sounds great. You can see what the amps are. Nine five nine six. Perfect. Okay. So yeah, let's shut off power. Let's verify power is off. Good. So now we're going to take off this old switch and we'll put on our new low pressure cutoff switch and let's get this cover back on as well and we'll see I can explain how a low pressure cutoff switch works as well while we're doing it. Get a couple birds with one stone. All right. Okay, so we got our old pressure switch off the pump. It's just held on with some lock nuts there and our flex and our water connection in this case is a little copper, uh, copper pipe connection, copper tube. So I still need to get this fitting off and onto our new switch, but before I do that, I just wanted to show you the difference. These are both low pressure cutoffs. One's a little older. Every time the pump starts, these contacts close. And every time the pump stops, those contacts open. And there's a small arc every single time. And over time, that arc builds up carbon and the contacts will get sooty. These are passable but they're bad enough that while i'm here fixing this other problem i may as well just go ahead and replace the whole switch you can get just a contact kit to go in there uh, and with both sides terminal side and contact side um, the way this works is there's a line in and a line a load out and the power goes through and around like so and through and around like so. So you have two poles, pole one, pole two. 
and currently it's open and then as the pressure falls it closes letting the power go from one screw to the next and from one screw to the next in this case we're doing 240 so we're using both poles and then as the pressure climbs the contacts open and if the pressure falls too far on a low pressure cutoff switch it'll lock itself open and then it requires a person to come and manually override the switch to hold it until the pressure rises and we'll do that here in a minute to where you have to hold it closed until the pressure gets high enough so it's a rudimentary and mechanical way of preventing a dry run in a pump because if the suction fails um, a tank runs dry that kind of thing um, or a valve is shut the pressure will fall so far that the switch will give up it's usually around 15 psi 10 or 15 psi then the switch just completely gives up and opens up and requires a an operator or a human to come and, and manually override it so you've seen these contacts here you can have a look at these on the brand new one they're shiny and silver still and brand new and this one has that same feature uh, the override these two springs here adjust it your larger spring on the main uh, shaft uh, turning it clockwise raises your cut in which is your on and your cut out which is your off so main stem raises both the on and the off and this smaller spring on the side you can adjust clockwise raises your off point so just your high end I guess that would be so main spring raises both and the smaller one just raises the top of the bandwidth but not your start point usually you just have to adjust the main and sometimes you can trim that one out from the factory these come at 3050 and it's literally just a rubber diaphragm here on the bottom that presses against these plates and works in conjunction with these springs to move those switch contacts like so open and closed all right that's your basic pressure switch operation uh, we'll go ahead and get it reconnected and relanded, and then we'll fire it up, make sure it all works, make sure it turns on and off at about 30, 50. All right, <clears throat> got our new pressure switch on. Um, first thing, you got our water line on. We can go ahead and open our little tap here. So this is just coming off of the system pressure on a little tap line down to our diaphragm. Turn that on. Looks like they've got like a residual 30 PSI in there. Um, We'll go ahead and power it up and we can watch amps while it's running just keep an eye on things and what we're going to want to see is the pressure come up and it turn off automatically in the beginning it's going to be in a low pressure cutoff it's not calling for it right now so i'm going to have to lift this handle and hold the contacts closed for a few seconds until it stays closed and then it'll run until it's off point okay Let's do it. So, nothing happening. We're gonna lift this handle. The way it goes. Should it let go and it just keeps running. Nine seven, that's perfect. Pressure's climbing, we're already up to 40. 42. right there 54 perfect is any water being used right as I go to touch it it turns off so let's see where the turn on point is I'm gonna go turn on the hose bit got some water running slowly out there pressures falling and we just want to see it turn on somewhere between 30 and 40 I'd be happy with and yeah ideally I don't have to make any adjustments I like to just use a little bit of water so that things change slowly, especially when I'm setting it up. I don't want to use too much water and have things happen quickly. Um, 
So yeah, we're falling. We're at like 44 PSI now. And it's just slowly falling. So yeah, we're at 40 now and slowly falling. There it was, sucked in. We're about 40 PSI. Uh, so we could lower that a little bit. I'll have it turn off right at 50. Okay, it's at 50 right there, so I just turn it left counterclockwise to lower the offset point. So now it's turned off right at 50. And then um, we'll uh, watch the water level go, or the pressure go down some, and then we'll adjust it again if we need to. Yeah, that 40 cut in was a little high, so I wanted to get down a little closer to 30 before it cuts on. Pretty simple though. Big center screw changes the on and the off. Clockwise is up, counterclockwise is down. And the smaller screw, you can make adjustments to just the off, which would be your high end. And having the low pressure cutoff is the way, um, especially if you don't have any controls or anything fancy. It's just a simple mechanical way to help protect your pump from no flow, um, no flow and loss of prime. Either one is a, is a problem. All right, we're at 38 PSI and slowly falling. That was sucked on at 32. Nice and strong, 9.4 amps, 9.3, that's perfect. that up a little bit so we're gonna raise the cut out just a little bit and that's the smaller screw because I like where it's turning on but I want to lift the off while keeping the on the same rather than lifting them both I just turn that up a little bit and give it a couple turns more and I'm gonna go open that hose bit more just to speed things up a little bit on all right well that wasn't too bad and uh, yeah we got it all sorted out so capacitor was blown literally opened up got a new one of those in um, pressure switch was really dirty sooty contacts on there so elected to go ahead and change that out Adjusted the on off set point with the new pressure switch amperage looks good pumps running good uh, This guy should be good to go for a while uh, That's it pretty basic. All right. We'll see you on the next one